welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be filming the last part of the material section of Watercolor 101. I know, it's finally here. Um, and this is going to be just extra materials that can help make your watercoloring a little bit easier or whatever, give you different effects and all of that kind of stuff. So you may not actually need all of these things, it's just kind of personal preference whether or not you want to use this kind of stuff. But I'm going to go over the tools that I frequently use and hopefully that will give you some ideas. So, first of all, some things that you are absolutely 100% going to need. A mason jar, yay! Or something to put your water in. It doesn't have to be fancy, but I do think that it's better if you use like a clear jar because then you can see if the water is getting really dirty because you want to change your water out fairly frequently that way it doesn't get all muddy and like change your colors so definitely you want to get a glass jar of some sort to hold your water in also while you're painting is really helpful to have a palette some watercolor paints do have palettes built into them and you'll see most of the time that I actually do use the paint palette that's built into my watercolors but um, it's nice to have a second one so this was only like a dollar from Jerry's Adorama it's really cute and I like it a lot so I'd highly recommend getting yourself a little palette another thing that you're gonna want to have while you're watercolor painting is paper towel or a toilet roll or a Kleenex just some sort of paper, like absorbent paper product. What you're gonna wanna do, and how I use this, is I keep it balled up in my left hand or my non-dominant hand. That way I can constantly dab the paintbrush onto it. Another helpful tool for the painting process is this guy. This is a pipette. Um, you, can, you may have seen them in your science class. You can get them at art stores, uh, and you can just use it to squeeze up water and drop it into your paint palette. It's really, really great when you're doing big washes, and that way you're not constantly going back and forth with your paintbrush trying to get water. A lot of times I also use it if I've got a big mix of one color and I want to mix another color, then I'll use the pipette and I'll suck up some of that color and put it in a separate paint part of my palette. That way I'm not going to screw up the original color. So pipette is very useful and a great time saver. Another thing that you can use during the process of your painting is mediums. I don't have very many of them, but the one that I do have is by Winsor & Newton, and it's their iridescent medium. A medium is basically something that you can mix into your paint and it will affect the way your paint looks. So this is an iridescent medium. It's super sparkly and pretty, and if I mix it into my paint, it makes my paint shimmery, which I really like because I like shiny things. So this is really cool. There's a lot of different mediums out there. There's texture mediums, glazing mediums. You can get things like gum arabic, which will enhance like, the fluidity and the vibrancy and the transparency of your colors. Going along with the whole mediums thing, you can also get this. This is masking fluid. This is the Incredible White Mask Liquid Frisket, and it is a white masking fluid. Um, I was previously using the Windsor & Newton masking fluid, but it stained my paper a little bit, so I recommend getting a white or colorless masking fluid. And basically what a masking fluid is, is it's a rubbery type of substance, and you can paint it on your picture, use a very old paintbrush or a rubber stick or something like that, because it is really, really damaging to your paintbrushes, especially if you don't wash it out immediately. But you paint it on your picture, you wait for it to dry, and then when you paint over it, it creates a resist, kind of like using wax crayon. At the end of your picture, when everything's dry, you can take it off. I use an eraser to do this, just this kind of regular old black eraser, make sure it's kind of stiff. Some people use their fingers, whatever you want to do, I find an eraser works the best. Um, and then underneath you'll have the white paper. It's a really, really great way to preserve highlights, especially in things like oceans and people's eyes and that kind of stuff. So um, liquid mask is very, very helpful and I like it a lot. So there are two different ways that I use to add white in after. The first is this. This is a white gel pen. Um, this is the Secura Jelly Roll and these are the only white gel pens I recommend. Um, they're the only ones that I've ever personally seen work. So I would definitely recommend getting these. You can use that. Or what I've recently started experimenting with is uh, gouache. Um, and this is an opaque designer's gouache uh, in bleed proof white by Windsor Newton. 
and this works beautifully to add white highlights over the top uh, and I really like working with gouache because I can lift things up and I can water it down and have things be more subtle I can blend out the edges a little bit more and I find it goes on a little bit more opaque than the gel pen so that's another option for adding white highlights at the end of your painting now when you're preparing your painting there's a couple tools that can also help you the first thing that I recommend is a light box um, I don't use this that often mostly because I'm lazy but when you constantly draw on watercolor paper and you erase a bunch it can really damage the fibers of the paper and it can affect the way the paper takes your paint. So if you are the kind of person that really erases a lot, or I would definitely recommend working on it set on a separate piece of paper and then transferring it over with a light box. Um, this is the Light Tracer Light Box by Artograph. It's a really, really good resource if you're doing something very detailed or complex. Along with that, if you are going to draw on your watercolor paper, there's a couple things that I recommend. The first is I like to use a mechanical pencil. I think that they smudge less and you want to keep as little graphite as possible from smudging on your watercolor paper because if you can't erase it, it'll mix in with your um, paints and it'll get muddy. Along with that, two things that are really helpful. One, this is a horsehair brush and you just use it like this and you can dust off your eraser little crumbs and I think this is really really helpful especially with watercolor because you do not want those crumbs on there when you start putting water and paint on because the paint will like they'll get stuck in the paint and the paint will pool around them and it'll collect and it'll get darker in that area so you really want to make sure you get off all of your eraser crumbs before you start painting so I think this is really really helpful the last thing that I recommend for when you're beginning to do the drawing is a kneaded eraser if you are going to draw directly on your watercolor paper which like I said I usually do I would highly highly recommend a kneaded eraser they're much more gentle on the paper you can press it on and pull off and it will pull up some of the graphite um, and you can kind of do that repeatedly or you can you know you can rub like that but they do tend to be gentler um, on the fibers of the paper than a regular rubber eraser. Something else that you can do when you're preparing your paper is tape it down. You can tape it down to either your desk or to an artboard um, but to tape things down you want to use masking tape. I do have one tip for you when using masking tape. If you just use regular masking tape sometimes when you pull it up it can um, tear the paper. So what I recommend doing is take your strip of masking tape and before you put it on your paper, take it, put it on your pants or your clothes, push it down and then pull back off, and then stick it on. What this does is it attaches some of the fibers and some of the dust from your pants onto the back of the, um, the masking tape and it takes away just the first little bit of stickiness and this prevents it from tearing your paper. One of the reasons to use masking tape is it's really, really helpful to prevent the paper from buckling. So when the paper is taped down to a drawing board, uh, it's not going to buckle and raise and go and do weird things as easily. It will kind of buckle in the center, but the edges are firmly taped down, so that's really helpful. The second reason to do it is aesthetically you can leave a really nice clean white border around all of your images. So when I tape mine down I do try to take care to make sure that the border is um, even on all of the sides. So. so after you've drawn your picture you may want to ink it. Some people do prefer to go in straight onto their pencil drawing and that's totally fine but a lot of people do like to ink their watercolor drawings. If you're going to ink your watercolor drawings there are a couple things to take account of. First of all your ink needs to be waterproof because if it's not it will smudge and it will bleed and it will go crazy. Second of all, it needs to be really waterproof because if you're the kind of person that's like me and you constantly like, I don't know, like lift and then add and lift and then add, even if it seems like it's waterproof with just one layer of water, when you're constantly like brushing it and brushing it and brushing it, sometimes even the best inks can smudge. So really, you want waterproof ink. Unfortunately, most inks that are truly waterproof are only in black. If you want to ink in a different color, there are waterproof or mostly waterproof options out there. You can also use colored pencils, and I personally think a great option is to paint it in pencil and then add the ink on top. So those are some options for colored ones. I'm going to be going over waterproof black inks. If you're going to be using a pen, my favorite is the Copic Multiliners. 
Um, these are fantastic. They do not smudge with watercolor at all. They are water and Copic proof pigment ink and they are great. Any pen that says it's waterproof should be fine. Make sure you test it before you go ahead and put it all over your painting. And also, one thing to keep into account is the drying time. Some pens will only be waterproof after like 24 hours of drying time. Uh, I try to go for pens that are waterproof within like five minutes of drying time because I'm a very impatient person. If you want to try using inks instead of pens, you can use a dip pen. You can also use a brush, but I never use brushes for my lines, I use dip pens. So a dip pen basically looks like this. I have two right here. Um, this is going to be the base of the pen, like the pen holder. So the end of it is going to look like that. And you'll see there's a little cross. Um, this one has a cross and this one has kind of like a little claw. And, it'll be and there'll be a circle around it. That's where you put your nib in. You can buy nibs and pen holders at most art stores. You can even get them at some like stationery stores. Um, I keep all my nibs in here. Uh, this is the one that I've been really enjoying recently. It's just a small nib. You want to try out different nibs until you find one that works for you. But luckily, you can buy sets very, very easily. So um, that's a great option to try out different types of nibs if you're interested in doing something like this. And it just slides right in like that. And then it stays. It's pretty simple. Um, to make the pen work, you got to dip it in ink. And there are two inks that I'm going to be talking about. The first is my all-time love. This is the Windsor & Newton Black Indian Ink. It's the one with the spider on. This is, in my opinion, the best black ink out there, bar none. Like, this ink is amazing. It does not budge. Like, once it is dry, this, no, it's not going anywhere and it does take a little bit longer to dry um, and I believe it has shellac in it and it tends to dry with a slightly shiny and slightly raised finish so it's a really really great ink but it does have a couple peculiarities to it also you do not want to let this dry on your nib you really don't want to let any waterproof ink dry on your nib but this especially is quite a sticky one but it is really really fantastic once your ink is dry for 15 to 30 minutes, you know, you can tell when it's fully dry and you can speed that up with a hair dryer as well. That's another important supply, a hair dryer. Hair dryers help the impatient. Get a hair dryer. The second ink that I have to talk about is one that I just tried is by Dr. P.H. Martin and it's their Bombay Black India ink. I had never been able to find an ink that didn't smudge other than that Winsor Newton one. I tried everything. I tried Noodler's Speedwell, everything. Even if it said it was waterproof, it still smudged until I tried this. And I really like this. Um, it's definitely got a little bit of a different feel than the Windsor Newton. It's thinner. It's not quite as thick and sticky. Um, it says it's non-clogging and non-toxic. And I definitely, uh, definitely see that. It doesn't dry with the same sheen as the Windsor and Newton. Um, and it doesn't seem to get as sticky on my, my pens. Obviously, you'll still want to clean out your pens after this. And so this is a really, really great option as well. It dried very quickly and it stayed waterproof immediately after drying. So that's pretty much it as far as inking. The last thing that I have to show you is this. And this is a brush cleaner. Um, it's the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. You can find these in pretty much any art store. If you open it up, it looks like this inside. I've shown it in my Watercolor 101 brushes video, but it is very, very useful to have a brush cleaner around just so you can take good care of your brushes, clean them when you're done, and make sure they last you for a long time. So that is pretty much it as far as the extra materials that you might need for watercolor. Like I said, the one thing that I did forget get a hair dryer if you are impatient. It is so, so helpful in speeding up watercolors. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if there's any mediums that you've seen out there that seem like fun, uh, anything weird that you use in your watercolors that you want to tell me about because I'm always trying to find new tips and tricks. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye! were founded in 1976 by Daniel Smith, obviously, um, who began manufacturing printmaking ink with good light fastness, and it grew into the company today. Um, it says they are a leading designer and manufacturer of beautiful artist quality watercolors and oils. It takes new 